We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right, Jared. It's nice of you to uh, wear the same shirt that you did in the last episode. Well, I only wore it for the episode. So I figured, you know, I'll just put it on the back of the chair and then I'll wear it again tomorrow. Yeah. Because if it's not dirty, I'm going to wear it. All right. Fair enough. Fair and enough. thank it, you, it, Kyle, for wearing the same shirt that you wore last episode. Consistency. Consistency. We definitely <laughs> don't record these on the same night. Of course not. All right. All right. Enough chit chat here. We're going to get into our slip picks week 10. It is week 10, Jerry, and that makes me a little sad. And it is November, which makes me even more sad, knowing that we are in the last third of the regular season here. But we got but we got six picks. We got six games to pick from here. So let's not waste any more time and we'll jump right into it. Is that good? Sounds great. All right. Uh, we're going to start off with a Big 12 showdown of Texas Tech and TCU. Uh, TCU, uh, one of those teams that uh, is a fan favorite down in our uh, Sloop Cats. Uh, they feel they feel that TCU has been um, uh, not judged correctly. Felt like that they should have been ranked higher than where they're at right now. And I agree. I agree. No, I didn't want, let's listen to our uh, Tuesday, Tuesday episode. Yeah, our yeah. Tuesday episode, and where we, we rank TCU where we ra where fourth. We, yeah, where we sorry, rank I, I, TCU. I, I screwed that up. You were you were doing a tease, and I I just gave it away for free. Thanks, Jared. I I ruined it, and I apologize. Right, TCU coming into this game ten and a half point favorite, and to go along with everything I just talked about, TCU feeling disrespected and all that. I'm taking TCU here. They they got a lot to prove here. They're like, you know what? Screw you guys. We're going we're going all in here, and we're going to just destroy texas tech here so i'm i'm picking the horned frogs uh, these teams are pretty comparable defensively speaking um they allow approximately the same opponents uh yards per play um same approximate completion percentage same approximate third down conversion percentage defensively speaking um but if you take a look at the offense um TCU has uh, 7.2 yards per play, which is excellent uh, versus Texas Tech's 4.8, which is when you consider they've been playing big 12 defenses all year. Not that great um, points per play. TCU nearly doubles. Uh, TCU gets a sixth of a point every play and TCU is about half of that. Um I think TCU is a significantly better team. I think that they have figured out or they are in the process of figuring out that you have to not just win, but win in a certain manner. If you want to not be the lowest ranked undefeated team. I think Jared, I think Jared's right for once. <laughs> Thank, thanks gangland um additionally additionally tcu is four and four against the spread this year tcu is six one and one against the spread this year so it seems to me pretty obvious that tcu's the tcu's the pick here all right awesome and uh this week's picker we have i gotta scroll down here i need to put this it's in buckeye this matt here. It yeah, you, you, you put that all the way down at the bottom. That's I, I did. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just going to copy this and put this in my notepad so I have it handier. All right, so he has red Big 12 team versus purple Big 12 team. Uh, whatever the over is, take it. This is going to be an <laughs> offensive showcase. Most likely will have a combined 1,000 yards of total offense in this typical Big 12 game. Don't be surprised if we see TCU have another game where they are down multiple scores to an inferior opponent, but TCU will cover and will 
put the game late. Give me the horny toads, <laughs> 58 to 45. It's a lot of points. What, what, what is, what is the, uh, over under in that game? You know, I was just, I was just looking that up. Uh, well, I'm going to anyone... beat you because it is everyone's favorite over under number of 69. Nice. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the over on that. <laughs> yes. All right. Next game here, Jared, as I'm attempting to scroll up here, probably the biggest game this weekend. It, well, it is the biggest game this weekend. Uh, Tennessee and Georgia. We got, we got two top four teams battling it out here. Winner of this will be the number one <laughs> going into next week, yeah. Jared. Yeah, yeah. It, it will be. Uh, 3.30 kickoff, CBS in Georgia, where the Bulldogs is an eight and a half point favorite. It seems like a lot, Jared, but why, why, why do you think it's eight? Why do you think that uh, Vegas has Georgia as an eight and a half point favorite? You know, I, I, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I think the number, I mean, to, the, I mean, you're, you're asking me to give away the answer right off the top, which is yes. uh, <laughs> kind of a bullshit maneuver on your part, if I'm being honest. But yeah, yeah I okay. don't, I don't understand that number, I think is way too big. Um, we've seen Georgia like not look great at times this year, which is probably why the committee put them third. Um, you know, we, we saw them struggle against Kent State. We saw them struggle uh, pretty bad against Missouri. Uh, we saw them uh, even their their uh, FCS school that they played. They they didn't win by you know they they missed the um, I think they missed the spread by like twenty points that game. Uh, but when they go to play good teams. You know, like Florida, like Oregon, they tend to show up a little bit more. Kent State is good. No. No, they aren't. I'm sorry. Um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you look, but you one look of the biggest the one of the one of the biggest things to keep in mind here um, is that. On the year, Tennessee seven and one against the spread, Georgia four and four against the spread. That to me, in both cases, feels like a a significant trend. So I will go ahead and and pick Tennessee because against the spread, they're a considerably better team this year. Um, and again, like eight and a, if this was like six and a half, I would. I, I feel like it should be like five and a half, six and a half, eight and a half is just way too much. Give me Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, I'll take Tennessee to cover here. It's going to be a one. It's going to be a one possession game here. Uh, I know we always talk. You hear always about Tennessee. This um, is the best offense here, and they score. They scoring at um, in every drive. But honestly, like you look at Georgia here, they they're not that far off from Tennessee. Tennessee averaging forty nine point four points per game. Georgia, 41.8 points per game. So one less touchdown per game. Right right there with Tennessee. The big difference is the defense. And Jared and I have mentioned it a number of times here. Tennessee's defense, it kind of reminds me kind of like Ohio State last year. Fantastic offense. Defense, not so good. They're letting up almost 400 yards per game while Georgia, 262 a game. That is that is significant in terms of uh, defense uh, efficiency here. So I'll I'll take Tennessee. I will take Tennessee to cover here because I think it will be a close game. But I it would not surprise me if Georgia does stuff Tennessee here. But I I, I just for the picks here I will I will pick Tennessee to cover. Yeah, I think Georgia wins, but. I'm I'm not gonna pass up eight and a half points. Yep. So Buckeye Matt also says the winner of this game will be ranked number one. Tennessee 
going 13-0 is also the best choice to have only one SEC team in the playoff. Fortunately, that won't be the case uh, as the Vols will have their first loss in a heartbreaker. I think Hooker will be humbled by this elite Georgia defense. Give me Tennessee to cover but lose 30-28 to on a missed game-winning field goal. He also says, also, fuck the SEC. Fair. Who's next? All right. Who is next? We have Oklahoma State and Kansas. Uh, did you pick this game, Jared? I did. It, it was the seventh game I picked. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 3.30 on Fox Sports 1. Or there FS1. were five incredibly obvious games. The Ohio State game, which we always pick. And then I had to find another one. <laughs> uh, Oklahoma State. It was this or it was Air Force and Navy. And now that I've said that out loud, Nomad's going to be upset at me. Oklahoma State coming off that dreadful loss last weekend. Didn't put up a single point. Uh, see how they see how they rebound as they are only a three and a half point favorite in this game. And and, and I'll, I'll take and I'll take Oklahoma State here. I'll take Oklahoma State. I think I think they'll rebound here. They're not as bad as what last weekend uh, showcased. But I, I think I think Oklahoma State will bounce and and beat uh, Kansas here. What you want a wild stat? Sure. Oklahoma State's third down conversion percentage, defensively speaking, defensively okay. speaking, they're only allowing a conversion twenty six percent of the time. Ooh, ooh, wow. That being said, 26.42. Uh, that being said, on the offensive side, they're only converting about 37 and a half. Well, more, more like 38, more like 38. And that's not good either. Right. Um, I'm having a hard time seeing Oklahoma State cover this spread. And quite frankly, I have an easier time envisioning Kansas like full blown winning this game than I do Oklahoma state covering. So my, the, the one hesitation I have here is that like three and a half points just isn't a lot in the big 12. <laughs> that's, that's, that's like a, that's like a 1.5 in other conferences, but yeah, I'm, I'm taking Kansas n not to only uh, cover, but to win. Now you might be asking, Jared, is this your choose your chaos game of the week? No, it is not. I I have a I have a bigger fish to fry. All right. Fair enough. All right. And look at Matt says here, looky here, two teams who are hyped up just to have their seasons come crumbling down. I really could care less about this game. Won't even watch it, honestly. Give me Kansas with the upset because Jayhawks is a cooler mascot than a cowboy. Give me Kansas Fair. 30. Give me Kansas 35 to 31. Uh, by the way, I just want to point out uh, mm -hmm. that this game is opposite Tennessee, Georgia. No one's going to be watching this game. Yeah, just agreed. Tossing that out there. All right. Next game here is uh, another Texas team taking on a another Kansas team here. Uh, <laughs> Texas versus Kansas State. Kyle. Uh, Kyle. Did you just did you just say Oklahoma State is in Texas? I'm sorry. Another orange team taking on <laughs> Kansas. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. I, I better I better stop while I'm ahead here. Uh, Are you Texas drinking tonight, a, Kyle? Never. Uh, <laughs> Texas is a one and a half point favorite. Yeah, Texas, one and a half point favorite. They're the only three loss team to appear in the initial playoff committee's top 25. And, and that's because they, they looked, they looked good against Alabama, Jared. Well, I would, I would also argue that like they're a better team with yours. I, I honest to God, honest to God will maintain. And I'll die. I will die on this hill. 
They beat Bama if Ewers doesn't get hurt. I've said it a bunch of times. I'll say it again. I don't care. I, I'll repeat mm, myself. Yeah. I'm not above it. I agree. All right. So you're going to pick, so you're going to pick Texas in this game? You know, I literally just said that like three and a half points is in the Big 12 is really one and a half points in every other conference. And here's a Big 12 game. This lit. this is a pick em. I am treating this like a pick em. But here's the thing. I kind of like Kansas State. I really like their defense. You tell. I really like their defense, which by Big 12 standards is pretty good. Um, I think that they're not as good as Texas offensively, but I do think that like defensively that they're a significantly better defense, not as talented, but they, they feel more cohesive. Um, the, the teams are pretty even against the spread. Um, this is a hard pick for me because I think it just comes down to who wins the game. And I, it feels it, it, this it's, it's played like a pick em. It might as well be a pick em. Um, I'm going to take Kansas state just because I think they win. What's rule number uh, two, Jared, two or three, two or three, uh, Austin lore master. Can we get a, can we get a check on that? Uh, <laughs> Whether it's ducks. <laughs> that is not one of the rules. That is not one of the rules. When in uh, doubt. When in doubt. Pick the quarterback. Pick the quarterback. Is that is that rule two? No, rule two is don't real life gamble. That's right. Rule number two is don't real life gamble. Rule number three is when in doubt, pick the quarterback. I'll pick Texas here. Actually, I kind of like Adrian Martinez now that he's the quarterback of Kansas State versus the quarterback in Nebraska. I mean, I, I like I like how yours is is playing here. So I'll, I'll, I'll take Texas here. I'll take Texas. Austin knows our rules better than but we the, know them. I so know. point that out. Buckeye Matt, let's see what Buckeye Matt says here. Uh, oh, I thought it was a long paragraph, but I didn't have a space in there. Uh, he says, I'll keep it short and sweet. Texas wins outright. I really don't think this will be a game. Te give me Texas 40 to 21. Really? A third Big 12 game, Jared? <laughs> it's an entertaining conference this year. But right. Ganglion, you just pinned a comment in a thread that we delete after every episode. <laughs> you better save that somewhere else. All right, we're moving moving on to probably the second biggest game. Yeah, it's it is the second biggest game of uh of the week here and it's in the SEC again. Uh Alabama and LSU. Is this is this another is this a setup here? It's night game. It's in Baton Rouge. LSU's go is an underdog here. It's, By it's 13 perfect, and a half. It's, it's the perfect setup. It's the perfect setup for an upset here. And don't, don't, you know, don't, I, don't, don't bet your I, patronage on it. I, I, I got don't the Tigers that. to cover here because I, it, it's a rivalry game. You throw everything out, you throw records out. I, I think, I think LSU's onto something here. Again, it's, it's, Last week, it's one game, the most recent game. They've looked good. Can they keep that up from last week, or are they going to go back to what we've seen them to be in the start of the season, where they are just a mediocre team? I, I'm I'm going to go with the first, and I, I think LSU will will keep it close. So I'm going to pick LSU to at least cover. We're all real down on Bama this year. And I get it. It's Bama. The standard is oh, up here. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. I got, we got some, we got something in, in chat here, Jared. Uh, Austin says LSU wins this game. I bet my uh, patronage on it. Please don't do that. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then it says nice knowing you. And we have some salutes there. <laughs> up here. W the standard for Bama is up here. So we're all looking at Bama right now. 
and saying, wow, they're not very good. But what we're really saying is, is that they're not very good for Bama, which means they're about right here, which is still really, really good. It's still Jared's house on LSU to win. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> it's right here. It's they're still an excellent football team. They win this game way more often than they lose this game. Now, luckily for LSU, they only have to beat them once. But Bama wins this game. 66% of the time, 75% of the time. That being said, 13 and a half points is a lot. I do think Bama is the superior football team. I do think Bama wins this game. Um, just say 66.6, you devil worshiper. 66.6% of the time, I think, because Saban, because Saban, 66.6% uh, of the time, because Saban, um, yes, excuse me, Satan, um, <laughs> mispronouncing things. <laughs> I'm uh, glad someone got the joke. Um, yeah, I think Bama is a superior football team. And again, like, we're all saying down year for Bama, down year for Bama, down year, for, down year for Bama. They're still a top five football team. LSU is getting a lot of stuff done uh, with a running quarterback, and that shit's just not gonna fly. No, they're 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 a top five football team. You guys, like talent wise, they're a top five. They're probably top three in all honesty. I think I still think they're in the top three best teams in the country i mean talent wise they're number one yeah um, right, so you got alabama to cover no i no. 13 and a half is too much like i said i i i said bama still wins this game two-thirds of the time but that also leaves a third a whole third left over for lsu and with a 13 point 13 and a half point spread that's 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 too many points. That's too many points. Although I will say there is a decent chance Bama totally slaughters LSU like this. This might be a game in which like it's. 21 to nothing after Bama's first three drives and we're all like, what the hell were we thinking? A tradition as old as time. Yeah. yeah I'm just looking at LSU's uh, schedule earlier where they they got slaughtered by Tennessee and barely beat a very bad Auburn team and mentioned before are we going to see that kind of LSU or are we going to see the LSU that slaughtered Ole Miss yeah Austin says hold on Austin says I love when Jared makes a whole argument in favor of one side then completely contradicts the entire argument with his pick as, as is they the noticed <laughs> They noticed. Finished. All right. Uh, Buckeye Matt here says, I really want LSU to win like really, really bad. Uh, Jaden Daniels will give this Bama defense fits all game. In the end, it won't be enough. I, th I thought you, you could have gone somewhere else with that. Uh, Buckeye Matt. <laughs> uh, this game will be extremely close until the fourth quarter. Bama will seal the game with a Jaden Daniels interception. Bama wins, but does not cover 35 to 30 you because fuck you, Saban. There. It could have, could have done a Lincoln Park um, reference there. Death Valley is a tough place to play, man. You're not wrong. It is. It is. Yeah. At night too. All right, and our last game, Jared. It is not a Big 12 team. It is not an SEC team. It's, it's, just, it's, just a, it's not even a conference-on-conference conference, uh, game. It's Clemson and Notre Dame. Uh, Clemson, Clemson heading to Notre Dame, uh, where last time they went to Notre Dame, uh, they lost, if you, if you recall that game. Uh, will, will Notre Dame have that... Sorry, chat chat got me distracted. Uh, Notre Dame, uh, can Notre Dame have that magic again here against Clemson? They are a three and a half point underdog here, or will Clemson have 
another one of those games where they come out in that second half and be like, oh, yeah, yeah, we, we, we should start playing football and uh, and seal the game. But are we going to see that kind of game? Or what, what do you think, Jared? I think I'm looking through the stats. Yards per play, teams are nearly identical. Points per play, Clemson has a slight advantage. Um, completion percentage, about the same. Third down conversion percentage, about the same. Uh, on the defensive side, opponent yards per play, about the same. Opponent's points per play, about the same. Opponent's completion percentage, nearly identical. Opponent third down conversion percentage, almost the same number. Against the spread this year, yep. both teams are four and four. Kyle, Ooh. these are the same football team. But but who who did uh, Notre Dame lose to? Hey, there, Kyle's a step ahead of me. Let's take a look at let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at that schedule. Let's take a look at those schedules. <laughs> they're the same picture. <laughs> yeah, they're the same picture. Um, Georgia Clemson beat Georgia Tech terrible Louisiana Tech terrible Wake Forest not bad NC State um, was this post or pre injury to Leary do you remember was this NC State with Leary because it's a totally different football team October 1st anyone remember that oh for with for uh, Clemson <laughs> Well, for NC State, yeah, but when NC State played Clemson, I literally got two contradicting yeah, no, no, answers that was in the chat. He got injured. That was before he got injured. That okay, was, that was so that's scary. a pretty good win. Uh, Boston College is a bad football team. Florida State's uh, they're they're okayish. Um, Syracuse, good football team. Not a great football team. It's a good football team. Notre Dame, however, has played Ohio State. Then Marshall, then California, and neither of those. Then North Carolina, it's a good football team. BYU, pretty good football team. Um, Stanford, well, they lost to Stanford, and Stanford's not very good. So, I, I, yeah. okay. Um, and then they also defeated Syracuse. Oh, both of these teams have their most recent game against Syracuse. Oh, oh, tell me more, Jared. Syracuse played at Clemson. So it's a home game for Clemson. Notre Dame went on the road to Syracuse. Notre Dame won by 17. Clemson won by six. Ooh. Finally, a difference. Ooh! Finally, I found a difference between these two football teams. Other Kyle? than the records. Other than the records. Shh. I say all of this to say. Terrible. I say I say all of, that both of their helmets are terrible. That's right. I said it. I said it. Ooh. Oh, there's actual gold flake. I don't give a shit. Notre Dame. Yeah, both plus have trash uniforms. Seriously, orange and purple. Can we actually. Orange and purple. Worst color combination in all of sports. I'll say it. Worst color combo, all of sports. Clemson, I, I am picking Notre Dame aside from maize and blue. Listen, I get it. This is an Ohio State, but like blue and yellow is not bad. Now, maize and blue, that's terrible. That's, 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 that's garbage time. The Rams, blue and yellow, not bad. Like, like even their, their, their uniforms, Jared, like 
because it's lighter. Yes, Austin. Yes. Purple is one of their colors, but they don't even like showcase it at all. It, it maybe just 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 the stripe on the helmet. That's well, it. So, some sometimes they sometimes they do. Like oh, the Chargers we, powder blues are great. One hundred percent, Austin. I t- we we're, we're in total agreement. All right. Yes. Ba- back on back on track. Back on track. All right. All right. All right. I am picking Notre Dame to cover. I am picking Notre Dame to win. Ooh, this is my choose your chaos of the week for Jared. Jared's choose your chaos. I, man, I really wanted to to pick this one. I re- really do, but I got, I got Notre Dame to to cover here as well. They've of all the things that you said, Jared, and I, I'll, I'll just add on Notre Dame finally finding their offense here. Can, Granted that they played UNLV, but they did play Syracuse last week. 44 points, 41 points, finally finding their offense here. And their defense, their defense is, is not bad. We, and we talked about that at the beginning of the season. This Notre Dame defense is good. They just got to find their offense here. Have they really found that? How they really found that here? We'll find out this weekend. But yeah, I'll, I'll pick Notre Dame to cover here, though, Jared. Okay. Oh, by the way, Matt, feel, please feel free to also choose a chaos game. Yeah. All right. Um, and uh, <clears throat> speaking of, by speaking the way, of real Matt, quick, another another Notre Dame thing I want to point out. They had a respectable performance against Ohio State. Lost to Marshall. Failed to cover against California, but they won. Then, then they beat North Carolina, handing North Carolina their only loss of the season. Yes. Why then they forget about that. Then they beat BYU again, a good team. Then they turn around, and they lose to Stanford. They turn around, they beat UNLV. Congrats. Um, they did fail to cover for the record. And then they turned around and again, Syracuse, good team, pretty highly ranked. They won that game by 17. Notre Dame plays well against good teams and like shit against bad teams. So that means that if Notre Dame wins this game, they're going to lose next week to Navy. I don't give it. Don't, I don't I don't care what happens between <laughs> Notre Dame and Navy. That's none of my business. That will not be a sloop pick next yeah. week. All right. Let's, Unless let's it is. Okay. I'm let's just saying okay. Notre Dame, Notre Dame, Notre Dame, Notre Dame. They're winning this game. See what Buckeye Matt says here. Uh, he says this game will help the cause for two Big Ten teams to get into the playoffs. DJ will have another god awful game and will be bent to the third quarter after he throws interception number three. Notre Dame will cover and get a convincing home win and will help Ohio State's resume. Give me the Irish 31 to 17. He also says, I fucking hate Dabo. That's fair. That's that's a that's a totally so, fair. So someone way someone to find feel. that uh, gif of Dabo and put that in there. Everyone knows what that what that uh that gif is here. <laughs> you know. Um, but that that is all of our picks here, Jared. Um, we covered the Texas Tech TCU game, Tennessee Georgia, Oklahoma State Kansas, Texas Kansas State, Alabama LSU, and Clemson Notre Dame. Yes, that one. Yep, that's the one. <laughs> and then if you want to listen to our Ohio State Northwestern coverage, listen to Thursday's episode. Listen to the Thursday episode, guys. Come on. Kyle, do we have any questions in the mailbag? Oh, I think we may. Let's scroll down here. All right. We have we have oh a hypothetical cha- we have a hypothetical chaos um question here from Buckeye Matt. This is a lot. Let's see if my ADHD mind can can hold all of this. All right, you ready? All right, hang tight, guys. I'm going to try to be as clear as I can here. So, Buck and Matt says, I'm a playoff chaos lover. And always tried to think of scenarios that could happen, but most likely never will. In your opinion, who gets in and, and in what order if, if the following happens, Jared? Okay, so you may, you may, if you have, if you have a, if you have a pen or if you have a notepad open, Jared, you may, you may want to, may want to 
want to write this down here, okay? Oh, I can State. see it on the screen. Okay. Ohio State, starting from the top here. Ohio State is 12 and 1, but loses in the Big Ten championship game. 12 and 1. So that means that they beat Michigan. Okay. But they lost to Illinois. I, I cheated. I looked ahead. Okay. Um, Michigan is 11 and 1 with a loss to Ohio State. Okay. Giving them only one. Um, I get, I get, yeah, just one good victory all year. Okay. That's, that's Illinois is 11 and two. Also beat with losses with losses to T10, Iowa, which is not no. Iowa, Indiana, but nope. wins the big 10. That would okay, be Illinois. 11 and two. No, that would be Illinois. Uh, excuse me, Illinois. Yeah, I was about to say, in this scenario... Sorry, Illinois loses to Michigan and Indiana, but wins the Big Ten championship game. Yeah. But, Jared, two losses. Okay, keep that in mind. Georgia's 11-1, yep. and one, loses to Tennessee, and does not play in the conference championship game. Okay. Alabama is 11-2 and two with losses to Tennessee and LSU, but wins, but wins SEC by three. Um... I it would be difficult for Bama to lose to LSU and still go to the SEC championship game. Yeah, that that would be. That's that would be difficult. That would be that, I mean, LSU would have to lose. They would have to lose to Arkansas and Texas A and M. Arkansas is. Dog okay, I, I just hypothetical here. Okay, Tennessee is eleven and two, gets gets upset by South Carolina or Missouri, and loses the SEC championship game. A two loss Pac twelve champion, a twelve and one TCU team that loses the Big Twelve championship game. Kansas State is eleven and two, wins the Big Twelve. Clemson is 11 and 2, loses the Notre Dame and ACC championship game. And UNC is 11 and 2 um, with the losses Notre Dame, NC State, but but wins the ACC. That's a lot of that's a lot of chaos there. A lot of chaos. So here's Okay, hold on. Hold I, on. I will tell you the two easiest ones in my mind here. Two easiest ones would be Ohio State and Georgia would be in. Kyle, I think do me a favor. I scrolled back up to the uh, to the Sloopcast rules, and I I yes. highlight one of them. Highlight? You highlight one of them? Highlight? Highlighted? I don't know. I've heard both. <laughs> All right. Do you see which one I... What is that? What is that? What is that? Rule that is there? rule number 12, don't lose twice. All right. So that means... Eliminate all the two lost teams. Oh. Right. I can... So... Mm. So that I could that would eliminate uh, Tennessee, Clemson. So so the so the the one thing that the committee Ohio always State. likes. What the one thing the committee really likes, Jared, is a conference champion. But in this scenario, it looks like pretty much every conference champion has two losses. It's almost like Buckeye Matt. Went into a lot of effort to make that happen. All right. You have Ohio <laughs> State in Teton and Georgia in, in. Georgia, Georgia in. in. Because the, the, the TCU would in. Have going, the, the thing that Georgia would have going for them is that they have a, if it's a close loss to Tennessee, I think the rest of their schedule will, and just already high expectations from them, they, they they would be put in. So even though that neither team would be a conference champion, I think both teams would be in. Um, um, as far, yeah. Matt as far says, as, yes, I did. Talking about uh, setting it up so that like none of the conference champions would get in. Uh, yes, I did. And my head fucking hurts. Yeah. And by the way, kudos to you. The only mistake I found in this was the uh, complete unlikeliness that 
Um, Bama Alabama could lose. Yeah. Yes. Kabuto's to you. Excuse me. Kabuto's to you. And also to you. Um, would be. Would be uh, uh, Bama losing to LSU, but somehow still getting um, into the SEC championship game. That's just not very likely. It would be. Yeah. OK. No, it would not be that. You know. You know what? I think I think Austin said it best. I think I think Austin's right here. And it is rule number twelve: don't lose twice. So the answer here, Jared, is he well, does not have a conference championship game, Austin, uh, in this scenario. Ohio State would be one. Georgia would be two. Michigan would be three. And getting in that fourth spot is the Sloop Cats team, TCU. Yeah. Are they not one loss? They are. In this scenario, that one... TCU 12 and 1, losing in the Big 12 championship game. Yeah. Yes. I agree, Austin, but I don't I don't necessarily agree with that order. I think I think it depends like Georgia. of course like how they lose, yada yada yada, all plays into it. Um it'd be it'd be Ohio State one, Georgia two, Michigan three, and then TCU four. We would have TCU versus Ohio State and then and then Georgia and Michigan uh fighting again. OSU won't be won over Michigan after losing to them. They, no, no, no. In this scenario, Ohio State loses in the Big Ten championship game. Michigan would not go there because they lost to Ohio State. Austin, we have the unfair advantage of being able to read this. It's it's fine. Yeah, I mean, well, it is in the Ask Sloopcast um, section there for you, Kabuto, if you, or you're all Kabutos. Uh, Austin, if you... Uh, <laughs> there are a bunch of Kabutos. <laughs> you want to look on. at that. I only have one screen. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think we're, we're just going to make it easy, Jared. We're just going to answer. It's the teams with one losses, Ohio State, Georgia, Michigan, and TCU. Yeah. But that's not how it's going to, that's not how it's going to be, but that's, that's how I would go. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm just not, I'm not going to waste a ton of brain cells on the seating anyway, but those are the four teams. Remember, conference championship matters in a afterthought sort of way. Yes. In a in a yeah, I I don't know if I want to say I know they say tie break. I feel like it probably matters a little bit more than that. Um I think it matters in head to head more so than it does in tie break. There's there's a subtle difference there. Uh, but I, I would say that I, I would assume that's how that goes. Um, Kyle, that's that's it. That's our show, right? That is it. Kyle, did you know that we have two T-shirts? T-shirt. Oh, God damn it. Try that again. Dr no, I, deep no, I breath, quit. Jared. I quit. I quit. Deep breath. Listen, I get to the end of the second episode. And as we have <laughs> established, <happy> t -shirt. <laughs> I want to buy T-shirts. <laughs> what you started, Jared. Look what you started. I'm trying to trying to picture what a t-shirt would look like. Um what is what what is happening? What is Tony? Oh oh no, Minnesota. Oh no. Minnesota is currently tied at halftime. Basketball, ba or yeah, basketball. Um 31 to 31 with Saint Olaf. But it, it's an exhibition, sure. But also, it's Saint Olaf. Uh, God, uh, Kyle, do you know we have two separate T-shirt stores? We have the seventy seventy one store, which has like a bunch of Ohio State stuff. It's kind of cool. It's uh, excuse me, not Ohio State of Ohio stuff, not Ohio State stuff. That would be illegal. Uh, this is this is just stuff from. Uh, celebrating the great state of Ohio. Um, our 
Then we have our merch store, which is merch.thesloopcast.com. Um, and that has a bunch of like podcast merch, stuff that has our name on it, uh, stuff that is a, so off to the side of Ohio State merch. It's not Ohio State merch. Nope. Don't send not. your lawyers after me. I, it's I, not. I, again, don't don't send your lawyers after me again. Um, yeah, the state of Ohio iBucks, exactly. But it's a bunch of podcast merch. And But if you don't like, oh, Jared, we want to support you, but I don't really want to wear podcast merch. I get it. Um, you head over to 7071 and you can buy a bunch of cool shit there too. Ah, is this the place where I can buy t-shirts and sweater jeans? Sweater I mean, those are just sweatpants. Like, I feel like you tried really hard and I appreciate that, but those are just sweatpants. <laughs> I can't picture what a t-shirt is in my mind. <laughs> it's a, hey, Buckeye Matt, you tried. You tried. It's okay. Um... T-shirt is a crop top, of course. See, I was trying to make it work on the bottom half of the body. Like, what would a T-shirt look like on your legs? But no, you're right. A T-shirt is a crop top. You're absolutely right. I hate when Austin's right. But when he's right, he's right. We don't sell any of those things in the merch store. Those are just T-shirts. Maybe some, maybe some other stuff, but, but it's mostly just t-shirts, hoodies, There's hoodies. Yeah. Okay. Kyle, I, we're off the rails. Do you have anything in, in Kyle's corner? You know what's special about, um, the day that we're recording, Jared, November 2nd, you know what November 2nd is? It's two days ago for anyone listening to this on the day it came out. It is. Anybody in the chat know what, what's so special about November 2nd? Um, that it's five days before, uh, the day we entered World War II. It is, uh, get out, get out your memes here. It is, it is National Ohio Day. Ohio Day. Listen, listen, I need everyone to, I need everyone to hear me on this. Always has been. <laughs> Every day is National Ohio Day. <laughs> Especially on Saturdays in the fall. <laughs> and I've been saying that. <laughs> Austin, we have been saying that, but they aren't ready for that conversation. Yep. Other than that, no, I, I got I got nothing, Jared. I got nothing it's, it's, here. So let's let's end this uh uh, the shenanigans here. You missed shenanigans. Shenanigans is the nickname I, for our I know, I know. other show. All right. Um, all right. That's it. That's the end of the show. Uh, once again, or for the first time, not once again, uh, for the first time, uh, tonight's ending music. It makes me crack up every time and I hate it. I can't breathe. If you want to understand these inside jokes, join our discord server at discord.thesloopcast.com. No, don't. Yes, do. The Turbos are a band from Columbus, and they will be ending today's show. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the Turbos. These are the Turbos? These are the Turbos.